All right, on to the next section here, the self-employment uh, income and expenses, okay? Uh, I guess I just want to kind of go over some things before we get going on TurboTax. Uh, Self-employment income. That's like if you got like a 1099 NEC, non-employee um, compensation, or 1099K for like third-party payments uh, that came through. If you got either of these, that, well, not always on the 1099K, but definitely on the 1099 NEC, the IRS views you as a business, okay? Um, you might think, well, no, I'm not a business. Yes, you are in the IRS's eyes, okay? And as a business, we want to write off business expenses. So the IRS says we can write off anything that is ordinary and necessary for you to generate income. Now, the reason they, they make it vague like this is because there's obviously a whole bunch of different types of businesses out there. Me, as an accountant, I can only write off certain things. Then let's say a video game streamer can write off, right? They can they stream on Twitch. They make a whole bunch of money doing that stuff. They, they buy video game consoles, video games, in-game purchases, uh, controllers. All those are write-offs for that streamer because they need that equipment in order to generate their income. Now, me as an accountant, can I write off an Xbox? No, because I don't need an Xbox to do my work, okay? Um, so that's why they do keep it vague here. So you got to kind of keep your mind open. Make sure that you write off everything that you needed in order to, to run your business, okay? And I would highly suggest that you get a what we call a P&L together or a profit or loss, that's what us accountants say, it's your income and expenses all kind of uh, put together on one piece of paper, categorized, okay, <clears throat> before you begin your taxes. So you kind of know where you stand. Um, you go through all your, you know, your bank statements, your receipts, and uh, compile those together in a, a P&L, a profit or loss statement. Now, I do have one of those on my website, you can download like a template version of this that you can then use, you know, to file your taxes with or just to kind of keep yourself organized. Uh, link in the description for that. All right, let's get started. All right, did you have any self-employment income and expenses? We know we did. That's why we're here. Um, Uber, I'm going to say I was an Uber driver. Okay, we'll say yes, we did. Uber. Uber driver. Let's see what happens. This helps us personalize. Yes, I was in ride sharing. That's what they call it, ride sharing. It's a side gig, we'll say. It doesn't really matter. They're just kind of like going through these questions to see what they're going to give you in the future. Regardless, you can always change this stuff later. Tell us about how long you've worked there. I'll say I'll started in... Uh, the beginning of 21. Did you make these payments for your ride sharing driving work? Let's see here. Oh, did we pay a contractor? No, generally speaking, Uber drivers don't pay anyone. Tell us if any of these less common situations apply. I, I didn't actively participate. I am maybe have like a self driving car. That'd be cool. Um, I'm subject to, to department. No, none of them apply. Okay, continue. All right, there we go. There's our and look at, they gave us this. This is actually really important here. Um, you want to make sure this does not give you that, what is it, the, the 999 code. There's like a, yeah, there we go, that one right there. Uh, if it gives you that 999 code, make sure you change this, okay? Because that's kind of like a flag with the IRS. I mean, it's not generally like, uh, it just doesn't look good. Um, a 999 is like kind of like a lazy return, essentially. It doesn't look good with the IRS. So make sure that you do actually get a code here. You can always like Google this. This is what they call an N-A-I-C-S code. Um, and you can just Google that and it'll probably pop up ride sharing this one here. Um, but anyways, make sure you do get a code here. Okay, um, there you go. So if you have an EIN, obviously you're gonna put your, you know, your tax ID for the business right there too. Um, and if you have a name for the business, you know, you'll make sure you put it there. Obviously, also your business address, okay? We need to confirm is what they're saying here, right? I didn't pay any employees. Uber drivers generally don't pay anyone. They are only working for themselves, okay? Cash method of accounting is definitely most common. It's very, very, very rare that you use accrual. Um, won't get into that. All right, looks good. I'm going to continue here. What companies? I'll say Uber. There we go. Continue. Um, well, I don't actually have an Uber account, so I'm going to skip this. 
Um, let's enter your income from there. So I got a 1099 NEC and one of those 1099 Ks for their other incentives. Well, it doesn't give me the option, but okay. Let's say I got both. Continue. All right, let's take a look at this 1099 here from Uber. All right, we got paid a little bit of money here from this uh, NEC, non-employee compensation. Okay, so we're just going to enter in the information here. Who paid you? We'll say Uber. It says on their Uber Technologies. Technologies. How is your payer's federal ID formatted? We'll say it's like this. It's an EIN, and that would be right here. Oh, look at that. Of course, it got all mixed up, but it would be right here is where that is. Okay, and I'm just going to make this up because I don't have it. It's nine. Okay. Um, non employee compensation, box one, right here. That's where we're going to put there. Okay. So this is 984.84. There's no taxes withheld, uh, and neither of those boxes are checked. Continue. Did you have any more self-employment income? Yes, I did, because Uber also gave me one of these guys here, 1099K, okay? So, which has some other income on there. So, we'll say that one, other self-employment income, 1099K. Amount on there, we'll see here. And on this one, you're using box 1A is the gross amount, okay? Um, all these other boxes here is just like a per month is what they're doing, okay? So you'll see box 1A is a combination of these two numbers here, okay? If we just work two months and we made 3,400 bucks, 3,423.6. Continue. All right, did you have any more? And we'll say, no, that's it. That's all I got, the 1099K and 1099NEC. Those are very common with Uber drivers. Next up, claiming your expenses, okay? We know we can claim anything that's ordinary and necessary to generate income, um, and Uber definitely has uh, some common expenses uh, for driving your car, ride sharing, all right? kind of went through that quickly. Let's see, what did they say here? No. Let's find all the expenses, ride cherry driving. Okay, we'll review, download a list. So they have like a list of common expenses here. Okay, recommended for you, but this is kind of like all of them. And this is like what the PL essentially is, is this all on like a spreadsheet. And I can show you an example of my PL template here. Here it is, okay. But you wanna put like gross sales, total um, sales came in or total money that came in from your business and then all the expenses here, right? All this for sure. And then if you have a home office, you fill this out. If you have, um, an auto expense, you fill this out. And then this will help, you know, get your net profit here. Okay. But that's essentially a P and L or this here, but in an Excel spreadsheet, get started. Okay. So we'll, we'll do one of these. Uh, let's see. Oh, first select the expenses, you know, you had. So if we filled out a P and L, we'll know what we have here. Okay. Startup costs, vehicle. Well, we know it vehicle expense. Will we rent a car? No, we have our phone. We use our phone for business. Maybe I got some stuff for the car, like waters and things like that. Other miscellaneous examples, of course. We definitely had the Uber service fees. Okay, yeah, you'll definitely want to get a copy of that too. Let's see here, this thing here. So um, Uber will have this on your account. They, what do they call this? Um, tax summary? Yeah, tax summary is what this is. Okay, um, and on here it's going to have you know, how many miles you drove online. So that's like when a client was actually in the car, how many trips, okay. Um, and then like your gross earnings. And you'll see these line up with the 1099s that we got, right? This one, the 3,400, that is the 1099K. And the 984 is the NEC, right? Here we go. Well, 984 right there. And that lines up here. So that 4,000 is what's going to go on our tax return as gross. Uh, but then 
you paid some fees to Uber. So that thousand dollars is essentially what this is. Okay. So we definitely want to make sure we account for that. Um, we don't pay tax on that money because we didn't actually get it. All right. Less common. This is a good option to click here. The less common, regardless, again, what business you're in, they're going to have their recommended ones, but then, you know, you definitely want to see all of, look at that. They have pages of this here. So you want to make sure that you, you do go through this to make sure any of these, you know, if they apply to you, you check the box so you can write off that expense. Okay. Uh, I'm going to keep this kind of short here. Uh, so I'm just going to go with the recommended ones. Uh, but if any of these do apply, like assets, okay, for sure, you know, you're definitely going to want to put your assets in there um, and we depreciate those, okay? Let's see. I'm just going to kind of quickly go through this here. Commissions, contract labor. If you hired anyone and paid them over 600 bucks at the beginning, we did kind of go through this. But if you paid them over $600 for the year, um, you should be sending out a 1099, okay, to that individual. Now, you would need to collect what we call a W-9 from them. That's one of these here, right here. This is this right here, okay? And if essentially, if they're checking this box, they have their name, they put their social on here, you paid them over 600 bucks total for the year, 1099 needs to be sent out, and the actual due date for that is January 31st, okay, of the following year. So if you paid them over 600 in 2021, we're a little late now, but it was January 31st of 2022 and uh, so on. So if you pay for 2022 over $600, the due date is January 31st, 2023. So make sure at least you don't miss it moving forward. All right, let's see. That's contract labor there. Interest on anything. Okay, health insurance premiums. You know what? I'm going to check this box here too. Now on this return, we have a W-2, so we probably wouldn't want both. Um, but anyways, if you are paying for health insurance and... This is your main gig, you know, your business is your main gig. You wanna make sure you deduct that, check that box. If you work from home, check the box, okay? Let's see, I'm gonna do that home office just to go through that. Um, meals, I'm gonna say some meals also, long-term legal professional. Maybe we pay tax prep fees, maybe. Mortgage insurance, office expense, repairs, maintenance, taxes, licenses, utilities. Okay, we're going to say that's it. All right, check for expenses that people often miss. Come on, computer. Do you have any startup costs? Okay, so like if you paid for anything before you actually started your business that you use in your business or used for the business, obviously you check the box. You want to write it off. I'm gonna in this case, I'm gonna say no. Did you rent a vehicle? No, I use my own car. Okay, keep going. Let's see here. All right, so let's start with the vehicle. This is like the big one for Uber drivers. Okay, um, and if you see again on my spreadsheet here that I have uh, for like a p and L, I I have that auto expense and this is kind of like the main, those two right there are the main uh, figures that we'll need. Okay, business miles driven and then total miles driven. That gives us a percentage, okay? Um, or we take the standard mileage. We'll go over that. I know it'll go over in a second. Did you use your car? Yes, we used our car and we're ride sharing. Um, I had a Honda. It doesn't really matter what you put here, but you know, you definitely want to try and make it as specific as possible. Select the type of vehicle. This is a car under 6,000 pounds. Uh, when did you start using the vehicle? Beginning of the year. Continue. Tell us about the owner of this Honda. I own the car. Okay, that's most common. Was this Honda available for personal use? Yeah, this is my only car. Did you? So I did use it for grocery store runs and the gym and visiting my mom, stuff like that. So we would put, you know, it is personal. Did you have another vehicle? No, this is my only car that I have. Did you keep track of miles you drove for your ride sharing, uh, driving work in this Honda? Yeah, I tracked the, the mileage. So this right here, you'll see, right? That's why this thing is important. This did track your miles. But keep in mind, this only checks miles while someone is actually in the car. If you, let's say, take someone from one place to another, and then you're sitting there and you're trying to look for another person to, to pick up here, uh, but that 
other, and then you find someone and that other person is, let's say five miles away. So you have to drive from there five miles to pick that other person up. That five miles is not getting accounted for here. Okay, so you have to make sure that you do account for those miles where you don't actually have someone in the car, but you are going to pick someone else up, okay? So this is not all the miles. This is definitely not all the miles we can claim, but for sure, we should be able to claim this, okay? So we're gonna say, yes, we did track those. You know, what happens if we say no? Okay, so yeah, it doesn't matter, I guess, right? What if I put yes? Same screen, great, good job. Um, not so sure why they did that. Um, I'll enter the total miles I drove in 21, yup, or beginning and ending. Okay, so you can do either or. This is set up, this P&L set up for the first option here, right? Um, the business, there's total miles, we'll say 12,154, and for Sorry, that was total miles, and this is the business miles here, 11, 10. And I'm going to say maybe double that because we had to drive a whole bunch more between clients to pick people up times two. There we go. Easy enough. 2220. There we go. Whoops, what happened there? Okay, here we go. We're four or more vehicles used for, for the... Uh, for work. No, this is it. I only had one car. Now let's select your vehicle deduction. Okay. So there's the standard miles. It's, it's essentially that, uh, it's 56 cents a mile for 20, 21, 2220 times 0.56. That's what it should be right there. It is. Yep. Um, or you can do the actual expenses and let's say, let's see here. It kind of depends, but I'd say it's more common that we get, um, a bigger deduction using the standard mileage than we do going through the actual expenses. Uh, if you have a more expensive car, then yeah, maybe the actual expenses will make sense. Um, but I'd say most of the time it makes more sense to do the standard mileage. The actual miles, you know, you have to go through all your gas receipts, not just gas for business. It's all because then they use a percentage and the percentage is based on the total mile or the business miles over the total miles. Okay. And then we multiply that by, you know, all the vehicle expenses there. So I'm going to keep it easy, uh, a little more conservative here, use a standard mileage deduction. Okay. You can also do like parking. Maybe I had to park. I spent 45 bucks parking tolls. Um, maybe I didn't take any tolls, transportation for work, property taxes, including your vehicle registration. Okay. We could write some of that off. Let's say there's $20 in there. Interest paid on the car. Didn't pay any interest. Maybe we own the car. All right. There's our, our vehicle deduction. And that went up because of the parking and that, um, property taxes in the vehicle registration. Do you want to claim another vehicle? No, that's it. I, I think I told it at the beginning. I only had one car. I don't know why it keeps asking. All right. Home office. Maybe I worked from home to do some admin work for the business regularly and exclusively. That is the um, the threshold from the IRS. Okay, regularly and exclusively. If you want to use it like sporadically, then you know we shouldn't be claiming the home office. It's got to be a regular on a regular occasion here. So I'd say, yeah, I used it. There it is, right? Regularly, and ex exclusively, and regularly. Your principal place of business. Okay, so. You can qualify for a home office as an Uber driver here. Um, yes, I had more than one. No, I only lived at one place all year. Did any of these situations apply at your home office? I shared my home office with a no, none of these. I'm live by myself. Let's give the home office where you do your ride sharing drive. Okay, let's just say it's called home office. Does it really matter? Was this home office used for work only, nothing else? We'll say yes. Did you regularly use this, right? It's gonna tell you here. Must be on a continuing basis. There you go. Was the home, home office the primary place where you work? Yeah, that's it. So I work there and then I get in my car and we go off. All right, we can do that. Let's see. Yep, okay. If we say no, did you meet with patients, clients? No, we didn't. Is this home office a separate? No, continue. It's gonna say you don't qualify. It's because we have to put this as your primary place. 
where you work. Based on this amendment, you qualify for the home office deduction. There we go. I started using it at the beginning of the year. Continue. How many months did you use the home office? At least 15 days. We'll say all year. Now I know this here is saying that I only worked, you know, two months essentially. Okay. Uh, but I am doing this as if I worked all year as an Uber driver. Okay. 100% was done at the home office. Help me figure this out. Yeah, all the business is at the home office here. Um, I do all the admin work. I track all my uh, mileage here and my expenses at the home office on a regular basis. Every week I'm doing this. What was the size of the home office? Okay, so you have to, you know, obviously do some uh, some measuring here. But home office, let's say, is 150 square feet, um, and my house is 1,200. Okay, it's going to give us a percentage. 150 divided by 1,200, right? 12 percent, 12 and a half percent is what they're going to give me. This, on the other hand, simplified home office deduction is generally the worst of the two options. I would recommend that you actually go through the actual expenses here, okay? Um, we'll go through the guided, okay? And if again, if you're using my spreadsheet here, this is also, this is geared towards renters, okay? If, you're, if you own your home, you can, you, uh, let's see here, would add a line in here for like how much the value of your home is, and then we would depreciate some of that with the home office here too. Let's say we rent. Square footage, we know we just did that, 12.5%. Okay. Um, expenses for my home office. Oh, so if you have, all right, yeah, def definitely this is not common. Um, if you have expenses that only apply to the home office, like let's say you just painted that area of the house or whatever it is, something like that, okay? It's not usually common, okay, that, that we have those. Um, entire, so... This is a misconception here. A lot of people tell me like, you know, I pay $1,200 a month in rent, okay? So they would put like $1,200 here. It's not monthly. It's on an annual basis because this is for the all year. This is a tax return for all of 2021. So we're going to do 12 months. We use this home office every month, right? So that's what we paid in rent, Okay. Same thing with utilities, right? We're going to put an annual uh, utilities here. So we're going to do all utilities. Look at that. We, we can allow for all utilities. Um, and let's say I paid about $250 a month for all of my utilities times 12 months, $3,000. bucks, and utilities that were separate just for the home office, okay? Um, rare. This is rare that we have this. I'm going to not put that in. Okay, home office, let's see here. So if you did any repairs to the, to the house, right, we can also get a portion of that as a deduction. I'm gonna say this year I didn't do any. Uh, renter's insurance, yeah, I paid like 120 bucks for renter's insurance for the year. Uh, home office, let's see here. A HOA, security, you can write those off here. I'm gonna say I didn't have those. And casualty losses, you were robbed. Um, that's, I'm laughing, but I'm sorry that if that happened to you, that it would be horrible. Um, I'm going to say, no, none of this happened to us. No. Okay. Here we go. Those are expenses. So we're going to add all that up times by 12 and a half. Okay. Maybe not <laughs> depreciation for your home office computer, right? So let's say I definitely have a computer. Wait, what just happened there? Okay, I don't know why they're making me do the whole rigmarole again here. I did hit back. I know that. No, I don't have casualty losses. Okay, so here we go. We add all this together. It's going to be 12 and a half. But then they ask, since you uh, doesn't home office depreciation does not apply to you. We know that because I don't own the home. Okay, deal. So there you go. That's way higher than that simplified amount. So it's 12.5% times, you know, the 14,000 for rent, the 3,000 for utilities, and the $100 for uh, the insurance. Okay, that's what that is. Whereas if you remember, this simplified version was like $700. So 
a lot more, I always recommend that you actually go through the actual home office expenses. Okay, communications, you would wanna put like, um, let's see here, we'll put our phone here that we paid like $100 a month for, for 12 months, okay? I'm not gonna go through all this other stuff, but you can definitely write that off, okay? Let's see here, supplies, maybe I bought some you know, water bottles for the car, air fresheners for the car, things like that, maybe phone chargers too for the car. Um, I would just lump those all in into one line here. There's no, no need to kind of like go line by line here. Um, and that's what I, that's why I would use a P and L here. I'd go through, you know, supplies and I'm just going to tell that I might make, you know, a separate spreadsheet here, supplies, um, and then say like my phone bill, you know, um, and anything else that I have here. Um, all right. So there we go. Let's see here. Supplies. I'm going to say, I don't know, $400. We'll say four forty two. Okay. Round numbers, typically they look and smell a little fishy to the IRS because generally speaking, when you go buy things, they're not like, you know, $100 even. There's always tax um, and you're never paying yeah, a round number like that. So when you put that on the tax return, keep that in mind. Meals, legal professional, other miscellaneous, we know definitely I'll put this one in. This has to do with the voila. Thousand ninety six. We'll get that on the return. Thousand ninety six. Oops. This is Uber fees. Oh, nice. Continue. All right. I'm just gonna say that's it. You can always add expenses, right? Like I said before, you might have checked those boxes, but you can always go back and look at more, and then hit this last common one, right? And then kind of go through that. All right, but I'm not going to go through that right now. Um, I think you guys get the gist of all of this. I hope so. If you don't, please leave questions um, in the comments section, and I'll try and get to those to help you out here. Okay, well, I'm going to say I'm done. Let's see where we're at. Look at that. We have a loss for this business, okay? They're not going to uh, give us a taxable loss because of that home office. The home office will only bring you to a zero, it won't bring you to a negative. All right, so there we go, continue. How much of the renter took place in all of this? This is all in the United States. We didn't drive Uber elsewhere. Was any of the ride sharing driving for a former employer? No, this is for myself. Do you have deductions for ride sharing driving that you'll claim elsewhere? Nope, this is all just for the business. All right, run my free check. Here we go. They're going to say audit risk is low. Okay, this is good. For someone who works in right here to home office expenses. Okay, low, but we can definitely do this. Okay, nonetheless. All right, home office with the ride sharing makes sense. We just say this is all for admin is essentially what, what we would do. Do you have another line of work for self-employed? Nope, that's it. All right, hopefully we're done. Hopefully. Yay. Okay. Nothing for self-employment. Nothing more. 